Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're having our monthly tech meet for the Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart a GM Hydromatic 4-speed transmission that they used in the uh, R-Types and uh, Silver Cloud series. Oh, like Ronnie, that. you can get those uh, paper seals. Where I got some on a shelf right now. Have you noticed anything wrong with this transmission? Besides those, those rings? Uh, in the Taurus, those rivets that were worn, there's two things that I noticed that aren't right. Okay, now we need a half inch. We'll pull off this rear pump from Governor to death. We're almost in there, boys. So now this comes out. Gotta get this in the right position. Uh, get lucky. There we go. <laughs> he tells me. I like that. <laughs> May not be true, but that's what he tells me. <laughs> Here's your two governor valves that go in and out. And like I, the two governor valves, when this spins, see how they go up and down. So this is the first gear shift because it's a big, heavy valve. So, you know, at a low speed, it's going to be out there. Right, and then there's a pump in here. It looks like an oil pump inside that sucks, and and it goes to this pipe that goes up forward to that front servo. All right, there's a band right here. Is it a marching band or is it? <laughs> it marches to its own beat. Okay, now the next step for disassembly, we're all like I said, we're almost there, is to pull this reverse assembly out. Let's see here what we're going to do. So to get this last piece out here, you got to take the, there's six bolts that go into this rear drum. And the hardest part is loosening these up. Usually you can't do it, so I adjusted this band back up. that whole shaft wouldn't rotate. Right? So this drum doesn't turn. But you could just hold this in because that's what's no. turning as well, can't you? No, that won't hold it. No, There's okay. a bunch of gears and all that. Unless the clutches are applied, it won't hold it. The band holds the drum. Watch out for that spring. That spring goes in here to help it release. How, how long will a uh, front seal last? Is it a matter of uh, three to five years before it starts Oh, they usually last long. Oh, yeah. So I don't know why this one started late. It depends. You go back to that quality of stuff. Oh, okay. um, thing too is that the uh, fluid is nice and clean and uh, apparently it's been serviced on a regular basis. Huh? Well, not too bad. Yeah. This, here's, um, here's a little caveat. Oh, that wow, look at that. If you don't put this in, this holds this, this aluminum piece that this cone pushes against. Because remember that aluminum cone pushed this? Yeah, yeah. And that pushes against this. Oh. Between the two it locks it up. So it brings this set of gears into play. Um, but this Easy part to index. Lose. This has got to be indexed because if you don't have that in there and you apply that thing, it's just going to spin yeah. and just eat everything up. When you say index, what does that mean? Uh, 
it holds it in place. Oh, well, that's what index means. That's what I, <laughs> well, how I use that word. It's indexed. It's kind of fun watching all these gears change. See how it changes direction? That's the reverse gears there. So when this applies and the front band's on, so that it locks up the the, the lowest gear, then uh, this locks and it just changes the direction of this. Pretty slick. I wonder if marijuana was legal when they were designing this. Just Cocaine was legal. Oh, just yeah. to think that somebody <laughs> could sit down and design that sucker and then put it into a small case and make it work, to me, is unbelievable. Well, yeah. planetary gear set is pretty neat in that you've got your sun gear, your planet gears, and your ring gear. And depending on what carrier you lock in, mm -hmm. it will give you a different ratio. One right. planetary gear set it can give you, uh, I think, three forward and one reverse, depending on what you lock in. All right, now we're getting this long shaft that was wobbling uh, goes, goes to the comes out the back. <laughs> Those snap rings are amazing, aren't they? They last forever in a day. And they're oh, they're annoying. I'll tell you, because it's really hard to hold them sometimes. Mm -hmm. You can see these tools have been modified. I had to modify them a bunch of times to get them to fit on things. And this thing, if you look at it, it's not really round anymore, and that's why it grabbed on that, that sleeve when I was pulling it apart. So when I put them on, I usually kind of make it round again with a pair of pliers. That's not a replaceable item, huh? Possibly. I don't know where I'd find one. But it always works fine after that. Once I, it's just... A, if you don't squeeze it back when you put it together, then the next guy taking it apart runs into that. So I didn't squeeze it back when I put it together years ago. Oh, a little shortcut, aren't huh, Ronnie? There's the two bushings that hold that into place. <coughs> You'll see a lot of the scuffing and all that on it. Don't worry about it. They're all like that. I use Scotch Bite to polish them up. If, if it's super thin, and you found a lot of gold shavings in the pan, then that, then you need to definitely start looking for stuff. See how it's a little like burnished. Like mm -hmm. the Cinco and the Synchro Mesh on the regular standard transmission. Well, the, the standard transmissions to Synchros are really, you can look at a Synchro and think, this thing looks perfect, but they don't really show wear unless they're super warm. All right. So now we're going to want to get that drum assembly out of there. It has some locking tabs on it also. When they go bad, I usually just put lock washers. It's kind of interesting how your front torus is what's connected directly to that shaft to the sun gear of your rear planetary system. What now? The front torus. The front is, torus. This is the rear torus. That's the rear torus. The front torus. Is it's connected to that shaft that goes through. through it goes and back. right into the sun gear that's driving the rear planetary side. Uh, and that's probably held, that probably keeps it from turning while the other one's turning until it builds up. Right. So you're also using the fluid that, coupling as part of your shifting, whether you have the front torus or the rear torus or both. Well, that's what gives it the resistance mm -hmm. to, so it can build the pressure to, to not lock it up, but mm -hmm. turn them together pretty well. See, it's always great to have engineers around because they think about this stuff that I don't even think about. I'm just taking apart, look for problems, put it back together. Great it works. If it doesn't work, take it apart again. That's why it always comes time you got to shoot the engineer and get out of production. Sometimes I curse engineers for mostly for the lack of the pre-thought of accessibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this has a, a pin in it also that holds the center shaft in place. Now this is a tricky part. You've got to get this out, get it in the right position. How it is usually not a problem. Go back in, can be. There we go. We got a bare case. Um, now we have the two drum assemblies. Let's get these. See them. 
So the band's good for 100,000 miles? Or? Bands usually don't get replaced. They're usually, this one's, it's got plenty of material on it. What kind of material is it, Ronnie? Ferodo. Black. It's black. Ferodo. Ferodo. Yeah. What is Ferodo? Brake, brake line. Oh, okay. But brake it's line. made to stand up to through yeah. it, obviously. Yeah. The rear band. Now you got your two drums here. Oh. That's that bad ring here. Now to get the drums apart, you gotta take this rear snap ring off. Another one of these. And you see how nicely that came out? Yeah. One out of a hundred. Yeah. Usually it goes, <laughs> fing! Yes. Cool.